Hello again, I am Blunty. This rig right here, I just built a couple of nights ago. I did it live on stream. There's a replay up on my channel if you haven't seen it. It goes for like three hours, so settle down, put it on the background, chill out while you watch it. Um, but yeah, this is the first AMD-based rig I've built in like forever. I am testing for review at the moment the 1500X and 1600X Ryzen 5 processors. The Ryzen 7 chips, having been already launched and sort of reviewed and put through their paces and stuff, those are the enthusiast-level chips, the high-end stuff. The Ryzen 5 chips, like these two here, these are two of the four that are, uh, are going to be available at launch. These are the every person kind of things. These are the ones that are priced affordably, competitively. These are the ones most people, uh, particularly gamers um, and YouTubers and things like that, content creators, will probably be building their rigs around because it is the more affordable price point and your bang for buck is probably going to be higher with these. I can't tell you any more about these chips yet. I'm under review embargo. But uh, sort of mid next week, I think it lifts. Uh, and I'll tell you all about these things. I'm in the process of testing them right now, which is why I built this rig in the first place. But I can tell you a little bit about the componentry that I put in here. Specifically, I wanted to talk about today the motherboard, which is the MSI B350M Gaming Pro. And I hope my fingers are in the right spot there because I'm doing that blind. Hopefully that lined up properly. <laughs> now, I do have to pause here for a moment because I do have some related news to go with this. Well, not specifically this, but anyway. I'm actually sponsored by MSI now. I'm part of their Dragon Squad. Um, and if you've got a really keen eye, you may have noticed the channel banner here on YouTube and a little update on my Twitch channel as well to reflect that. Um, what that means, uh, as far as the channel goes, is not much is going to change except when I'm reviewing graphics cards, like a new range of stuff coming out from AMD or this new cards coming out from NVIDIA or whatever. Uh, I'll be looking at the MSI ones specifically. I'm going to be working with those guys more closely. It's going to be easier for me to access uh, the range of stuff for reviews and things like that, including motherboards and all that sort of stuff going forward. But this specific motherboard I chose myself off my own bat and I paid for out of my own pocket. I made that decision before the deal was signed to become a Dragon Squad member. So... Uh, when I say this is the motherboard I chose, I really mean this is the motherboard I chose out of all of the other ones. So if you guys are really interested, I can go into more detail about what the MSI Dragon Squad thing is going to be about and how it reflects my channel. But I just wanted to talk about why I chose this motherboard and speak about how to choose a motherboard for your AMD rig, because there are uh, choices to be made. There are different series of motherboard that enable different feature sets and different uh, amounts of expandability and I.O. and flexibility and whether or not you can overclock and whether or not you get the super secret uh, overclocking ability of the Ryzen chips because the regular speed and the turbo speed aren't the be all and end all when it comes to Ryzen chips. It's actually a, um, an acronym, which I forget. I'll put it on screen right like here, which means uh, when it can, when it detects the presence of a, an aggressive cooler, so water cooling or, or a very, very fancy aftermarket fan cooler or something, uh, it will actually boost a little bit higher on the B series boards. It's going to boost up to about 50 megahertz higher. So not a huge leap, but a little tweak. Um, on the uh, X series boards, which are the enthusiast level boards, it will double that, extra 100 megahertz or so. On the A series boards, which are the boring boards that none of us really are gonna need to think about because they'll just be going in desktop machines for people to do accounting on and things like that. <gasps> no, that, that, none of that, none of that. You can't even overclock at all on those boards. However, you can overclock all of the Ryzen chips. So you know how Intel have got their overclockable ones and the ones they've got you know, locked, you can't overclock them at all, naughty, naughty, you can't touch them, stop, stop fiddling with them. Well, AMD are just like, yeah, you can overclock any chip you like. Um, you want a B series board or an X series board in order to overclock. So that's part of the reason why I chose this. First off the bat was actually price because I was going out of pocket for what was essentially a fairly last minute build for a test rig. I didn't want to spend too much. Luckily, the MSI B350 Gaming Pro, which I already had my eye on since it was announced, is in fact already one of the cheapest options around at just 129 Aussie dollars and you Yanks can snag one for under 80 of your Trump currency units. There was also the MSI B350M Bazooka, which I also considered. It is just $10 more. It has four RAM slots instead of the Gaming Pro's two, but the Bazooka has fewer SATA ports and fewer USB 3.1 connections. And as this is a test bench, I leaned on the side of more connectivity rather than being able to go ham on the RAM. There's a couple of other small differences too, like the number of fan headers. But in the end, they are very, very similar boards in most ways. I actually want to build a mini ITX 
Ryzen 5 rig down the line, but micro RTX boards aren't really available yet, so I went with micro ATX as opposed to a full size ATX board because of the easier compatibility of if and when I want or need to move this thing between cases for reviews. This gives me the option to review smaller cases as well, of course. For specifics, the Gaming Pro has the two DDR4 slots, maxing out at 32 gig and 3200 megahertz. And as a micro ATX board, it has the usual single PCIe 3.0 by 16 for your graphics card. It is flanked by two PCIe 3.0 by 1 slots. Perhaps for a capture card if you are a YouTuber or Twitch streamer or something. There's an M.2 slot which can use the new blisteringly fast NVMe standard, of course. Six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports for your drives. Six USB 3.1 ports. Three of them are Type A. One of them is Type C. The rest are internal headers. Six USB 2.0 ports. Again, some on internal headers. An Intel gigabit LAN. Realtek 7.1 channel audio. DVI, VGA, and HDMI all on board. And, as I've taken advantage of, MSI's Mystic Light system, which is their onboard software controlled RGB header, so you can sync up your entire rig's lighting and control it from your desktop, or in fact, you can control it from your mobile phone as well. <laughs> Aside from that, it's got all the stuff MSI boards usually boast. Superb build quality, high quality components, reinforced PCIe slot. And of course, it's got MSI's pretty friendly BIOS interface with simple and expert modes so you can dive as deep as you like into tweaking for your overclocks. And it does go pretty deep. Giggity. Aside from all that, it's no stretch to say that it's one very nice looking motherboard too. A real nice balance between MSI's usually aggressive aesthetic and a sleek, elegant presentation. I really like it. I want to see this kind of style in more MSI motherboards going forward. I love it. So there you go. That's, that's, that's why I chose this specific motherboard. Um, the rest of the components here, I mean, I talked about them in the live build stream, but this case specifically is a Corsair case. The specific model is on the screen for you there. It's kind of like the baby version of the big Crystal Series case that I reviewed uh, like a few months back. Um, I actually like this one better. Um, aside from being smaller, more compact and easy to deal with, uh, it has the shroud that covers the complete sort of bottom half of the uh, um, front of the case there, so you can hide a lot of cable mess and a few drive mounts down there and everything. Um, and as you can see, yourself it's a very very clean looking thing the, the the cooler you can see spinning in there that's amd's uh stock cooler stock cooler it doesn't actually come with the um with the 1600x i've got in there at the moment because that doesn't come with the cooler itself the 1500x does come with a cooler um, there are three different wraith coolers this is the top end one that doesn't actually come with any chips yet i think but you can get it separately um they've all got this little uh, led ring uh, rgb led ring that goes around them and it's one of the most badass looking stock coolers that I've ever seen. I really, really like it. It's not the quietest thing you'll ever hear because it is just a stock cooler. It is significantly more well behaved than Intel's stock coolers are. I can tell you that much right now because I don't think I've got a review embargo on the coolers, just the chips. If I do, I'm in trouble. Um, there's also some RGB RAM in there, which I did talk about on the live build stream as well. Um, I'm not really familiar with that brand or anything like that, but it's very, very fast RAM and I don't know whether I can tell you what I've got it clocked up to at the moment, but again, that's something you have to watch out for with uh, uh, Ryzen builds. They are sensitive to RAM speeds, uh, a little bit picky. The faster you can get your RAM, the better off you are, which is another reason to invest a little more in a motherboard that can ramp that RAM right all, all the way up um, and invest in decent RAM as well. So the money you're saving by going with the AMD Ryzen 5s, you can invest in other places. Like you can upgrade your motherboard a bit more than you would have maybe. You can get better RAM or more RAM than you would have maybe. You can get a better video card than you would have maybe. There's, you know, lots of different reasons why building a system around the Ryzen 5 uh, has uh, a lot of little advantages. Just little advantage here, little advantage here, little advantage here. But as far as performance and everything goes versus the Intel equivalent stuff, I will be talking about that in my uh, series of review videos. I'm going to split them up into sort of bite-sized pieces of different, focusing on different aspects of it. So, you know, we'll be talking, looking at game performance and game performance versus my i5 back here and, and game performance versus overclocking itself and overclock versus overclock. And, you know, you, can, you guys can tell me what specific stuff you want seen, but uh, I've got a plan. There's going to be probably at least five different videos over that week. And then, in about mm, two and a half weeks' time, I'm going on a trip, which is the first trip I'll be going on as a, as a Dragon Squad member, a, a sponsored trip uh, from MSI. I don't know whether I'm allowed to tell you what that trip is about yet, but it is related to the reason why you clicked on this video. Uh, that's, that's, that's about as much as I can say, I think, but it should be quite, uh, quite a lot of fun. It's going to Austin, Texas. So, yeah, thank you for watching this kind of rambly, ad-libs kind of 
review of the motherboard, I guess, and, and sort of talk around uh, the AMD Ryzen 5 stuff, seeing as I can't talk about them specifically just yet. I talked around them, which I think is perfectly okay as far as the non-disclosure agreement goes. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I'm Blunty. We'll catch you next time. Dump your questions in the down below area. I will try and address as much as I can uh, as practical um, over the weekend, and uh, next week we'll have a bunch of this stuff flooding out for you. <sighs> catch you next time.